Why, hello, good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here, just uh, waiting for the video to catch up. Make sure you can hear me and all that good stuff. Make sure you can hear some smooth jazz in the background or whatever it is. I can't hear it. So anyways, welcome everybody. Big thank you to Claudie and Jesus for their rework it, which was cool. And uh, welcome everybody. Good to see you, Ron, Susan, Ted, uh, Marcia. I see you guys out there. Ah, Christine as well. Sam Peterson in the house. Awesome. Good to see everybody. We're going to dive into this right now, if you guys don't mind, huh? Ooh, uh, yeah, we're going to dive into this right now. Check, uh, check the resolution and all that good stuff. You know, if you don't double check things, that's when things get screwed up. But you can see right in here, uh, I have, of course, a Discord open. And uh, this is day two, by the way, of our Behance Daily Creative Challenge. If you're joining me elsewhere, come over to Behance. Uh, that would be awesome. We're gonna, it's all about combining images. So this is the fundamentals of Photoshop. If you understand today, you're halfway there because it's like all, everything else is just like repeating <laughs> what you learned today. So uh, that's the short of it. So uh, creative challenge as we scroll down, how to merge images, bring images together. We're going to just merge about three images together, but it's the start of something great. So let's get started. As it says right there, uh, you'll go ahead and download uh, the seemingly innocent image right here. Let's open that up. All right. And here we are. All right, Tracy Miller. Hi, Tracy Miller. Hello there. Awesome. So welcome everybody. Here's this image, as you can see. Uh, I'll just hide that bar at the bottom. This is some lovely flowers. Yesterday we learned how to optimize Photoshop. So hopefully it's set up uh, just the way you want it. Okay. And we can see off to the side of my layers panel, we're just going to turn these flowers into uh, flamingos, but this works for anything because if you joined me yesterday, hey, it was all about uh, optimizing Photoshop and taking advantage, uh, advantage of the new plugins panels as well. So I did this yesterday. You could use my flowers or just search for flowers, right? Go out there, search for flowers or flowers in vase. Let's see if we get anything with flowers in vase. There we are, right? Cool, perfect. You could do flamingos. You could do uh, lovely uh, birds as well. So like, again, just grab one of these, right? Open that up. And again, I can always nest this off to the side uh, and then replace that with a uh, small bird. Let's do small bird. Right, so perfect, so it's pretty easy. I even gave you guys a bird yesterday. Look at this one right here. So fun what you can do. It's just like, hey, you know what? Replace those flowers with this bird, but we're gonna go with this image right here. So let's get this party started. Happy Wednesday. Oh, good, Varun is ca catching it when it's live. That's fantastic, cool. So here's my lovely flowers, okay? Uh, they're just on sort of a, a uh, on a black background, okay? We can always change that. In fact, that's the first thing I will do. And I use this all the time. I'm all about easy buttons. Select that vase layer, remove a background. And that's gonna go ahead. Magically remove the background, right? Done, right? Looks good. And again, we can turn on that black background or replace it with something else. So right down here, yeah, let's add a new layer. I usually add a layer and then I go to my gradients panel and then I'll just select one like that, okay? So it drastically changes the look of the whole thing, right? I'm loving the pastels too. I think colors are fascinating. It's fascinating how it uh, kind of like, how the colors you're into kind of is like, kind of the mood you're in, which is just interesting in my opinion. Okay, so we learned how to do a remove background. Let's do that with this flamingo as well. Okay, if you wanna go the long way, right, you could do that. You could use, say, the new object selection tool, right, if things get a little bit more refined where you just need to select a certain object. I usually make sure in my options bar that this is set to lasso, right? Lasso easy, right? 
come down here because I kind of want to chop off the legs there, right? Just loosely select it. Hold your hands up like this. Wait for it. And by the time you grab your coffee, it's already done. Fantastic. So we did the selection process. Okay, you're learning how to merge images. You're learning how to select. You're learning that it's not always going to be perfect. Right? So we need to go in and select some more. Okay. All right. Oh, Frank, by the way, I would put some skulls. I would merge some skulls into some flowers like nobody's business. <laughs> so right up here, um, we have a lasso that we could use. The lasso is going to be the most exact tool that you could ever have, right? So currently, if you hold down the shift key, sorry about that, I'm all over the place. Zoop. Shift key for any selection tool is going to add to. So we'll add to, right? And then option key will remove from, so minus. And what we want to do is we want to remove from. So the option key, just kind of roll through there. You're like, Paul, I'm not that exact with the lasso tool. Great, neither am I. Right up here, we'll pick another tool because all of these tools are just different ways to select right up here at the top. Frank's in the house. Welcome, Frank. Ooh, there's there's a, a flamingo on your rum carafe. Oh, that sounds awesome. Very tiki of you. Quick selection tool. We can use the magic wand. We can use quick selection tool. Jump in here. Do I want to add to? No, I want to remove from. So hold down that option key. Click once, and that pretty much gets, gets it done. I use the quick selection tool like all the time. All right. So down here might be a, a case where I use the um, lasso tool to not grab that portion. And we'll just kind of see what this looks like in the composition uh, next. But that's what this properties button does, is it selects and then adds a mask. So we're kind of showing you if you need to get more detailed and that magic button won't work or whatever, uh, you could do it this way. You make your selection and this is the most important thing as I kind of really dive into this. And I get it. You guys, a lot of you already know this, but you know how crucial this is as well. Right in here, you're going to add a layer mask. OK, so we don't want to delete the background. We want to just kind of hide it. So the mask, as I click, removes the background. OK, see what it did there? Added that layer mask. And then I still have those pixels there. It's just if I paint on white, it will reveal them. Uh, and if I uh, paint with black, it will remove as well. So right down here, if I wanted to remove the legs, and let me just turn off that layer. If I wanted to remove the legs, I can go ahead and select a brush. Right, we'll make sure just it's a, it's a hard round brush. We'll use my bracket keys, and then I can start painting out the legs and removing what I don't need. Yeah, I love the gradient too. I've been into these like softer gradients. In your uh, gradients panel, there's pastels, and that's kind of like my jam, you know, right in there. So, anyways, there's the flamingo. You got it. Uh, uh, <laughs> flamingos are awesome. Like, you can't, and it's such a weird looking creature. It looks like it hit a wall. It's like, bam, what happened to your bill? But specially designed. He's like, why do all you birds with the straight bills always have to face downward? Why don't you just have your bill face downward so your eyes can always be on the lookout, I assume. All right, so here we are. Here we have the vase. Here we have the flamingo. And then we want to kind of position these wherever we want. Now we have two flamingos just to explore what we have. We have that one and then we have this one. So let's cut these out and then we'll decide which one goes where. Gradient looks a bit cheesy, and that's what I love about everybody. Everybody has a different opinion. 
You know, because if we all had the same opinion, everything would look the same. We'd all have the same gradients. I'm not, that's not interesting to me. Somebody picking maybe the same gradient as me. I'm interested in, in sort of unique perspectives. Okay, so we'll go in here. We could do the same process. We could either use the selection tools or we'll use remove background. My process is typically to do a remove background, see how far I can get with that, and then go in with the selection tools or with a brush and remove. Everybody does it different ways, but what I'll do is I, yeah, I use the lasso tool all the time. I'll go in here and I'll select this whole area, okay? And then I wanna fill it with, Ted gets it, black, right? So we'd use a paint bucket or whatever, right? And remove that. I've never actually used the paint bucket here, to be honest with you. <laughs> there we go, you click on it. That doesn't work, it's gonna give it a halo, right? Boom, click on it, ah, oh, that halo, that's lame. What I typically do is I fill the whole area with the foreground color. So there's fill, edit, fill this is the way i do it and i just fill it with the foreground color so again fill that whole area with the foreground color right shortcut key shift delete we'll just bring that up so this is what i do it's like undo i'll select it shift delete enter done move on with our life all right uh, oh, Maribel, by the way, I want to welcome Maribel. She was here yesterday. She's late today. It's okay. I want to welcome you. Um, this is for Maribel um, and for anyone who's like new to Photoshop. And Maribel, just kind of do a quick recap. We've been isolating these flamingos. You can see how they were before, by the way. If you right click on that mask, you can say, hey, you know what? Disable that layer mask. That's what it looked like before. There it is after. Here's this flamingo before and then after, okay? So we're just isolating them and then we're gonna colorize them and position them. Rob Winterberg's in the house. Hello, Rob, welcome. I didn't, I didn't hear you come in. Thank you for introducing yourself. Apparently my, uh, my door beep didn't beep, my ring door beep. I, I was kind of accused of going a little fast yesterday and I totally get it. There should be a fill with the skull option. You know there is, right? Because technically, just since I'm ahead of schedule, you could have a, a skull pattern, and I'm so sorry I don't, Marsha, but then all you would do is you would select what you want to fill, and then select right in here, pattern. So there could be a fill skull pattern pretty easily, but that's a little overkill for me. All right, so there we are. We have our flamingos. We have our flowers. Notice how our flamingos are off a little bit, right? And you're probably wondering how to navigate as well. Yeah, that's where there are refill plays. Good call. Um, I, if you hold down the command key, so you, so, so, so let's talk about selecting items. Now that we have three items on this canvas, let's talk about selecting. Because there is this auto select. What that is, is that will, when you have your move tool selected, it will automatically select that layer. So watch my layers panel bounce around uh, when I select these different uh, um, objects. See, it's just kind of bouncing around from one to the next. It's automatically selecting that. I accidentally end up moving things when I have that turned on. So I turn that off. Boom, turn that off. And I usually go to the layers and I feel like it's very old school of me. Do you guys do this as well? I don't know if you guys do this as well. Like I use my layers panel to select, but sometimes I don't want to do that. Like I just, I want to make sure I'm on the right layer. I want to make sure I'm on the right layer mask. This is hugely important. Oh, I'm painting on the mask or I'm painting on the layer. Huge, right? So um, check this out. You could toggle between those two by holding down the command key. So I'm holding on the command key on a Mac or control key on a PC. So again, just a power shortcut. So now I can toggle from say selecting layers to selecting objects as well. So there we have it. We'll take this one, we'll move it right here. That's what we'll do. We'll take this one, we'll move it down here. 
Oh, thank you so much. Varun does it too. Does command click as well. Now I don't feel so weird. Oh yeah, Chris, uh, Christian does it as well. Awesome, old school. Appreciate it. Sweet. Okay. Monica selects the layer. Good to know. Welcome, Aman. Out there on YouTube, I see you. Uh, but let's do this now. So, so here's a situation. We have two situations happening now. The color and the size are off for this one. <laughs> Sean puts everything on. I'm sure you do. <laughs> so, so let's do a couple things. Actually, let's finish this, this one right here. And it, it'll, it'll become more apparent for this other one. But let's finish this one. We just kind of dropped it here. Meanwhile, we might want to blend it in a little bit more. Well, that's where we go to. That layer mask, we go to R, B for brush. We'll expand this out. We'll go to just like a nice soft round. We'll change the flow down to like 15 or something, kind of around there. And then we'll resize using the bracket keys. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And again, we'll make sure that black is in the foreground because black conceals, white reveals. Now I can start to paint that away and blend that together. So that's what I will use to kind of blend those two to make one object, mainly getting rid of that shadow that's kind of cutting through. Okay, so just doing something kind of like that. Now it looks like it's more part of uh, the, uh, the vase. Cool, looks better. Ah, <sighs> oh, coffee to the rescue. Uncomfortable silence. Let's move on. This one, uh, control delete for background. Oh, thank you so much for that. Kanan, you can use control delete for background and you can do alt delete for foreground color fill. Ah, I'm gonna actually screen capture that comment. I'm just kind of always toggling between those two. So thank you for that. I knew there were two shortcuts and I haven't quite gotten used to it. Okay, so here's the situation. Deep breaths. Uh, so, so this one needs to be a different color, right? And lots of things need to happen. <laughs> okay, so I need to position it there and change the color. So what would you typically do? You'd go to edit and then you'd do like maybe a free transform, right? Typically people will do this, right? Free transform, they'll shrink it down Oh no, I made it too small, right? They'll try to scale it back up. And that's basically a destructive process that just happened. Now look how blurry it is, right? So you don't wanna scale down and then back up because you're destroying pixels when you scale down and you're trying to magically bring back what was not there. You're not a god, right? You kind of are in Photoshop a little bit. Guess what? You'll feel very powerful knowing this next. Uh, tip and trick. So we want to protect all the contents of this layer. So we will right click and we'll convert this to a smart object. Hey, if it says smart object, seems like a good idea. Bam, boom, what did it do? It says, hey, I am protected. I'm a separate file, double clicking on it. Oh, I am a separate file. Wow, that's certainly handy. Okay, so we'll go back here. Now, when I resize it down and up, it's non-destructive. Because those pixels in that other file, it's this, all those pixels are in this other file. It's like, hey, we're good. Play all you want non-destructively. So we shrink that down, we move it over here, we rotate it, zoop, just like that. Okay, just like that, zoop, zoop, right? We can take a look at this. We could add by that, by the way, that mask is still in there in the original file, but I can always add another layer of mask, hit B for brush. Start to blend this in too, right? Let's get rid of, and bring back, hit the X key, you'll kind of flip between the two. Maybe get rid of some of these darks. I don't know, it's just something you're gonna have to play with. I'm hoping you guys do, I'm sure you guys will do a fantastic job, right? And there you have sort of number two. We're locked in right there, okay? All right. Option, Alt, Command, Control, are those all the keys? All right, so here we go. Uh, 
So here's the next issue. The color is off. You keen eyes out there, your Chris your geniuses of the world. You guys, uh, you guys are very keen to recognize that this is actually red and it's not quite a pink. So we need to tweak it accordingly. How do you tweak things? You might go up here to layer or image and try to figure something out. Okay. How I think most people do things is right over here. Remember, we added a layer. We added a layer mask. And right in here, this one right here, an adjustment layer, right? Because I just want to adjust that. I want to add an adjustment layer. And look at all this glorious stuff that I encourage you to play with, okay? So if here, for in here, I would just um, tweak the hue and saturation. So I'm selecting hue and saturation. Okay, let's move that back. It gives me this panel and uh, gives me this layer. So now I can tweak it. Watch what happens when I tweak it though. It's gonna change everything, right? Even if I cycle through all these colors, it's changing everything like disco, disco mania here, okay? Uh, you could always reset it with this little button down at the bottom, but we wanna clip it. So not only have you learned about layer masks, but you're gonna learn about clipping masks. And I showed this to you guys yesterday. The two types of masks. Create clipping mask. Oh, by the way, let's make this really drastic. Okay, so notice how all the flamingos are green. Create clipping mask. Bam. Oh, look what it did. It just changed this one flamingo from uh, red to green. So now I can go in and just tweak this just a little into more of the pinks. Maybe maybe make it desaturated, make, maybe lighten it a touch, right? Play with this all you want. You guys get the idea. Uh, what's the name of this? Again, I missed it. Fleming, flamingo and... I don't know. It needs to have a clever name. Right. Uh, but yeah, there we have it. I'm not, I'm actually not crazy about this gradient. I think it's okay. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, I would go with something like this. Something nice and soft that just kind of has the subject stand out a little bit more. Okay. Flamingo flambe, you guys. Flamingo rose. Flamino, fl flamine rose. That's what I was going for, or something like that. So that looks pretty good. Um, for you pros out there, I encourage you, like, do that with some of these other assets based on what we learned. Let's do it fast, right? Rasterize layer remove background, right? Let's just apply layer mask. Let's be a rebel. Let's grab this little bird, copy. Boom, boom. Command T, flip horizontal. Uh, convert to smart object. Scale it down, move it over. Add an adjustment layer. So this is a recap of everything you've just learned. Hue and saturation that's set to a clipping mask. And now we can kind of tweak those colors. We can make sure the, uh, I don't know, maybe the, it's back is uh, yellow maybe, right? Something like that. And then we can like move it over, right? Add another layer mask. And then we just have some fun. We're just having fun now, everybody. Is that okay? Hopefully you guys are having a good day. Yeah, that's fascinating. Have you seen a baby flamingo? I don't know if I've seen a, like, a, uh, and I don't even know what a baby flamingo would be called. Ooh, you know what would be fun is if it's actually nestled in there. That would be cute too. Huh? Why not? There it is. Bring it down. There's a, again, I would do one bird and it's a bouquet of birds. Right. Ultimately, I would have some different birds, but you guys get the idea. Right now, I think I'm just showing off.
Uh, uh, uh. Get there, get there, Paul. Get there, get there, get it done. You guys get the idea. We're just having fun. Do what you want. Export this out. Save for web. So file, export, save for web. Take this down about 2,000, 2000 pixels. Just like that. All right, have some fun with it. It's up to you guys to kind of throw some more creativity at it. But again, this is for people who are new at all of this. Look at everybody having fun with birds. Drop this one in here. And this is all about merging images together. A flaming good, flaming good. I don't know, something like that. Throw some corny statement in there and uh, you are done. And that is it for me, everybody. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, we got an exciting day uh, full of awesomeness. So we have uh, Nathaniel Dodson is up next, Tutvid, and then join me later on with uh, Shanti Sparrow. It's going to be fantastic. Whew, something in my eye. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate you guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you. We will see ya. All right.